that we have with China with our two neighbors. They respect our, in, our intellectual property. We've had these rules under the, the NAFTA trade agreement since the early 1990s. We've, worked, we've had problems, but we've worked them through. We have a really smooth relationship. And the private sector has built these big networks of trade for lettuce, avocados, mm -hmm. other things, but for cars, for building things together. That's different with China. There, we do have in some of the high-tech areas, in iPhones and other things, we do have that kind of uh, relationship, but more of that is put together with Chinese products. The intellectual property is U.S. intellectual property, but that's where you get into the problem of China not respecting intellectual property, stealing it, right. trying to make it, turn it into its own industry, thus turning it into a, a more of a predatory relationship. So it sounds like you are for what President Trump is doing to China right now to got, recut a new deal on the tariffs, whether it has to do with us not having to share our intellectual property with them due to their new Made in China 25 plan that they have. It sounds like you're almost for what he's doing. Well, I'm certainly for dealing forcefully with the Chinese. You are, you are for dealing forcefully with the with, Chinese. To get, their, to get them to pay attention, to change their practices. But you, what you have to do is you've got to balance that very carefully because there's a lot of pain that comes with this at the same time. See, that's done. this is a really important part, how to balance. Mm. Uh, so it is, and because there's a relationship between America and China, trade relationship, and, and they don't share the same value, mm. so they need some tactics, mm. right? Mm. And, but if you choose wrong tactic, also it's going to hurt everybody else, mm. not only mm. China, mm. right? And so this is really sensitive, sensitive, right, right, right? right? Our farmers, for example, lost a lot of markets, and the combination of having disputes with Canada, Mexico, and China together hurt the farmers of the United States and the Midwest tremendously. Those were their biggest export oh, the markets. Uh, Record-breaking bankruptcies that we haven't had for over a decade. That's right. right. You have to measure the tools you're going to use with the costs of using those tools. What is that? Right. You have to measure the, the tools which you're going to use, and also the cost. Right. Me. That means I probably would not have put tariffs as, as large tariffs. I would have looked for other ways to increase pressure. I would have rallied other trading partners with ch to join us in pressuring China. How would you do that? Well, I would do it by uh, working with them to get them, show them what they're losing to. I would have explored, what are you willing to do? We're willing to up these tariffs, do this, are you willing to do something similar to increase the pressures? I would have explored that. But doesn't it sound like they don't want to do that? Coalition. Well, we haven't, we haven't really forcefully explored that. I think we've gone about this as the U.S. versus China. Now, you can do that, but there are costs to doing no that. Doubt that's about all it. I'm saying. What's the... See, so I think that that's really uh, important to think, and uh, that's a really, really key point here, is... So what Trump did was, uh, he did it on himself as America against China on high tariffs, right? Mm -hmm. But what, as the ambassador says, uh, uh, what actually would have been more um, uh, uh, important or the more effective tactic would mm -hmm. be... He said about uh, charging tariff. Uh, just you right. know, Amer just only instead of just America, instead right. we'll find other people. Well, consider for fair trade. Yes. Well, who would join? Right. Who would join to to? Uh, yeah, he's right. Right. He's right. Right. Yeah. Worst thing that can happen. So, so take us to the worst place. So we're talking worst place on what could happen between the U.S. and China relationship when it comes down to trade. Well, the worst place is that we pull down a, a, a new shade, not quite an iron curtain, but a trade curtain where our trade goes way down. We have different partners in the rest of the world. We trade with those partners, but it's no longer part of a, of a free-flowing, unified market, and you don't get the benefits of that more free and fair trade. Mm, and so right. that would... Right, this, is, this, is a, this would be the worst. Right? We won't avoid this mm. situation. 
which was the happening in, on Iron Curtain, for example, mm -hmm. right? We don't we, do that. No, we don't. We want to avoid that. I think the, the worst outcome. That, yeah. You sort of move into two different spheres of influence. The best outcome would be we get to an understanding of what the the best practices are for trade, and you know we don't like each other wonderfully. Maybe we disagree on democracy, other practices, but we still have a strong interaction between our economies that builds on the strength of, e of each economy. See, that's and that's important, right? Yeah, you see, the, right, exactly right. The, so. For example, between Japan and Korea, you know, there is uh, trade and there has been some uh, tough things going on right now. But um, as long as if, you know, uh, focus just strictly on trade and, and by avoiding getting into each other's business of uh, political business, then it would have been just been fun, mm. right? Do you think it's really going to be a deal where it's going to be 50-50, where both benefits from each other evenly? Mm -hmm. Or do you think right now, you know, President Trump's trying to strike a deal that's more benefiting U.S. versus it is China? Well, I'm sure he's trying to get the best deal he can, which means he'd like to get more benefit for the U.S. I don't know where it's going to come out, really. Mm -hmm. um, but what I do know is the worst outcome would be that we don't solve the problems we sort of divide the world up and we're competing all around the world, but we're not solving the differences between us. And one of the problems are we are going to have some serious differences on some military geostrategic geostr issues in the South China Sea. We're going to have differences over our approach to democracy. Um, it's easier to solve some of those problems if you're not fighting about everything. So if we can get to some understandings on international commerce that are mutually beneficial, I mean, we'll have to figure out, it won't be clear right away, this is 49, you know, 50, 51, or is it 30, 70, we'll see over time. But if we can get to a, an understanding and start working that, we will see who's coming out here, how's it working. And then we can turn our attention to other issues versus just fighting about all the issues. Uh, how much are you following the Huawei scandal with uh, Meng in Canada and Ren? Are you following the 5G battle between U.S. US and China? So how, 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 how do you feel about the fact that when he signed the executive order, no U.S. company can do business with Huawei, and then Google comes out and cut the contract for their operating system, and now Huawei's projecting that they're going to lose 30 to 40 percent of revenues. How much do you think the fear of China getting 5G before us is the motivation behind us pushing China with their tariffs. Do you see that as possibly being one of the reasons? I don't think that's the main reason for pushing the, the tariffs, but I think it is part of the calculation. Mm -hmm. And I think what people saw was China had laid out this very ambitious plan over the next decade to build their high-tech capacity. They're moving ahead of us with distributing 5G technology around the world, and the idea was they are doing this unfairly. They're doing it with st some stolen technology with some government subsidies. And so people indeed are quite worried. And they're worried about the, the fact that Chinese companies have to cooperate with their government on intelligence matters. So of course people will be worried, right? That's mm. natural, you know? The, it, it this is an American government complaint of Chinese subsidy. Right. Right? He said, right. And so thus, they're worried that Huawei systems can be penetrated by the Chinese government when they're deployed around the world. Exactly. Now, all those things have to be verified, they have to be looked through, and all mm -hmm. of our partners haven't accepted that. And that's part of the debate that's going on internationally. When we go other places and, don't, and say, don't buy Huawei, people say, why not? We give our argument, they said, well, show me, show me this and show me how the Chinese are, are using this. And so this is, it's not clear where this is going to come out yet, um, but clearly the U.S. government, has, has, as you said, has become very worried about Huawei and has launched a, a strong effort, not just China-U.S., but internationally. I, I wonder what's going to happen. I mean, I wonder, okay, so let's just say we strike up a deal and it's a great deal. What is a great deal for U.S. if we were able to get something with China? in your opinion? 
Well, in my opinion, it would be a verifiable um, deal on intellectual property rights. It would look at state subsidies for companies that uh, compete internationally and would have a regulation of that. It would have the, the right to if, if, uh, a dispute settlement mechanism with the right to take retaliatory action uh, if, if that settlement results in says yes, you can claim his right. Um, it would, you know, it would be a, a big set of issues. It would not, what it would not be is we're going to buy 50,000 more tons of soy next year. That would be good, but we, what you need are institutional fixes that deal with the bad practices. Right, mm -hmm. we need you know, right. institutional fixes exactly. right, to deal with the bad practices. Yes, right? what he's talking about subsidy. It's, it's very, it's very important. Mm -hmm. Very important. Yeah. Not just promises of buying more things for a year or two. Yeah, I, I, again, I'm, I'm really curious what's going to happen with this because it's been going on and it doesn't seem like uh, either side has given in. So we'll see how that's going to end up. Uh, talking about you as an ambassador of Mexico, when you were.